episode two of Prislam Diaries begins now. There is an infestation in the Texas prison system. This infestation is worse than rats, roaches, or even brown recluse spiders. It is an infestation of corrupt concepts perpetrated by the Texas prison officials and their so-called Muslim flunkies. In my humble estimation, this systematic attack upon Islam is indeed intentional and with purpose, leading the charge in this anti-Islamic thought campaign would be the Texas prison officials who lump black Hebrew Israelites, Moorish science Templites, Nation of Islamites, and real Muslims together in one service calling this Islamic services. Now we expect this from the Kufar, who are manifest enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the underhand, sneaky, conniving ones are the extreme Shia, who teach that you should only take from Ahadith related by the Ahl Bayt. Or worse than this, they teach to slander the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. Or they teach the denial of the Sunnah outright, all together. Hater number three of Islam and its proper aqidah would be the followers of Waratuddin Muhammad, our modern day Amriki Musaylama, al kadab whose followers also reject Sunnah wa Ahadith if it does not support their deviant preconceived thinking. For instance, if you were to say that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed his ummah not to initiate the greetings of Salam to non-Muslims, they would say in retort, I don't see a problem with it. Or another for instance, how one Texas chaplain, Imam, would hide away from the Muslim population a bunch of noble Quran translations because it gives the explanation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ghayril maqdubi wa dalim. They, the followers of Waratuddin Muhammad, disagree with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, they throw out this hadith and refuse to allow anyone within the Texas prison populace to possess this book containing this hadith. Now, neither of these extreme Shia or followers of Waratuddin Muhammad believe in following the usul of understanding Quran wa hadith. Therefore, every Texas Muslim prisoner becomes a scholar of Hadith wa Qur'an left with their shayateen to interpret these for themselves. Now Malcolm X compared prison as second to only college as a place for a person that wanted to learn and decide to change their lives. So therefore, the prison officials the extreme Shia and the followers of Waratuddin Muhammad have embarked upon a war against Islam. 
to deny these prisoners this time of deep contemplation and reflection which may turn their hearts to adopt the correct concepts as well as actions befitting those concepts. Instead, they spew these free-thinking, free-willy, free-balling individuals back into an unsuspecting society. A society in need of the hawk. Now, the greatest threat of these three, the Texas prison officials, the extreme Shia, and the followers of Waratuddin, would be the followers of Waratuddin Muhammad. Some of their teachings would be that when Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina aminu, it is not a khas address, but it is indeed am. To include Buddhists, Hindu, Christians, Jews, kada wa kada. That the literal meanings of the miracles performed by the prophets of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala are indeed insensical and illogical. That no logical person can believe that Jesus السلام, raised the dead by touch. That no logical person can believe that Musa السلام, struck the edge of the Red Sea with his staff. There arose two walls of water and a dry path in between for Bani Israel to escape the clutches of Pharaoh. They say there must be a logical explanation. I say, you, sir, have no knowledge and no Iman. Now these individuals claim to be Sunni. But you cannot be more physically or intellectually further from the Sunnah than this bunch. Now this is just a snippet of the beliefs of those that follow Waratuddin Muhammad. But let us move past the fruits and observe the seed in which sprouted the roots to this deviant Aqidah. Much like the Christians, he said he did not have a physical father, but his father indeed was God, and he himself was a manifestation of God. He claimed that he received a divine sweet water from heaven, which was revelation in which he was baptizing his followers with. Again, he stated that the miracles reported in the Quran are unrealistic symbolic stories that could never convert an intelligent person. He openly claimed that no one can tell him how Jesus was born because he too was born that way and that he is indeed the long-awaited Mahdi. He claimed that Christians need not embrace Islam and he would not want to disturb any Christian with da'wah that was doing well. He claimed that the order or word came down from heaven to follow Imam Waratuddin Muhammad and if you do not, you are like a dog. He openly declared that he does not believe in anything that he cannot see. He proudly announced and supported the marriage of his supposed Muslim daughter to a Christian man. He declared that we owe an allegiance to the Christian people and that Islam did not come to establish itself over anyone else. He stated that an atheist, Christian, Jew, Hindu, Buddhist, etc. may worship gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but yet and still be Muslim in spirit.
Now there exist way more deviant thoughts, statements, and actions by him and his followers, even to this day. The ruh, the breath that Allah breathed into Adam, was that distinguishing factor with the rest of creation, meaning what? That is the intellect of the human being. That's why Adam is neither male nor female, because both men and women have intellect. That's why Adam is neither male nor female. Now, this video was not motivated by hate, but love of Allah, his messenger, and his deen, al-Islam. Now, all that I have stated concerning Imam Waterdeen Muhammad is indeed documented in text as well as video. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God be sincere into his deen. Wallah and Allah al-Kadhibin.